everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Carol Jenkins. The program is Black America. Today we're highlighting the Harlem Fine Arts Show, the largest traveling African diasporic art show in the United States, touring 67 cities this year. With us to talk about the Harlem Fine Arts Show is the show's founder and CEO of JWG Enterprises, Dion Clark, and artist Michael Escoffery, whose work is represented in the show. And thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. It's, our pleasure. it's so, so great to have you. We were talking on the set before you all joined us about the art pieces that we could have had, you know, like a Basquiat that slipped yeah. through your fingers. And, and uh, Dion, thank you so much for, for mounting the Harlem Fine Art Show. This is uh, going to be incredible at the Riverside Church. This, this is our 10th year. 10 years. We're reaching double digits, so we're excited about that. Um, it's a great opportunity to showcase some of the best um, African diasporic artwork in the world. Uh, Riverside Church is our home, our home, our home again. Um, well, it's a beautiful, so, yes. beautiful place to, you know, to do it. So how many artists will you have this year? We have over 60 to 80 artists and right. galleries from all around the world. Uh, they come and we are placed all throughout Riverside Church and it's uh, what you'd call a wonderful world of color. Fabulous. And how you are saying that the, the traffic for the Harlem uh, Fine Art Show is huge now. When you started 10 years ago, how many people did you have? Yeah, maybe 500, maybe um, 400 people that came through our doors. We've grown um, immensely over the 10-year the period of time. Right now, we bring between 10 and 15,000 people over the four-day period of time. But it's not just the artists. It's the social atmosphere that's yeah. there. It's the great music. And more than anything else, it's that social consciousness and that embracement of the artists who are there on set that really kind of makes it uh, work. Right, and I do want to ask about the prices. So, you know, the person walking in on the street not knowing that much about art, will she or he be able to find something to purchase because everything is for sale? Correct? Yes, everything is for sale, and we start as low as maybe $10, $15 in terms of maybe some um, original um, pieces and, and all prints, different so. sizes. Right. We have prints. We just have a, an eclectic uh, group in terms of the size, and it goes from maybe $10, $15 to maybe 100000 and that's the largest amount someone has actually purchased a piece for. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you the evil eye, Scott yeah. Ferry, for I know, when you said 100000 <laughs> you look over here. Right, <laughs> right exactly. Well, and you've been exhibiting uh, every year. Yeah, I've been there from, uh, from the beginning. I think yes. I missed one year, but other than that, I've been there for nine years now. Right, right. Well, I, I want to ask you both. I want to talk more about your art and see some pictures and see some things from the exhibit as well. Mm -hmm. But we always start by asking our guests to place themselves in black America. Start okay. with you. And I will be calling you Escuffery. That's how you prefer right. to, that's the way you are referenced now. Yes. Uh, a piece by Escuffery is a very important piece of art to have, as, yes, as we all I would like to have bow. some, to <laughs> okay. I know the artist. Maybe I can work something out for it. That would be good. I, I love the story of your, you're from Jamaica, of course, yes. and that your uh, painting life started when you were 10. Yeah. Um, I grew up, I was born in Jamaica. I grew up in Jamaica. And the funny thing is I'm from, I have four siblings, and my mother and father were both artists. And I like to tell the story when people ask me, how do you become, I said I was conceived by artists and born an artist. <laughs> but they could not fulfill their ambitions as artists. So I think all that energy and desire was channeled into me. So even as a child, I remember getting paints, brushes, and things as Christmas and birthday presents. Those are the only type of presents I remember ever getting. So. From 10, I was encouraged. My father, who did sculpture and my mother did painting, they would both focus on teaching me the skills at 10, while my siblings would play kids' games. You know, so I was always channeled in that direction. Which, they saw the gift. Yeah, and which I appreciate it now, years later. You know, I see the wisdom in there. The, the, the influence. So, so 10 is not too soon to no, begin no. to emphasize well, what. Because most people in the arts, be it music, whatever, you know what you want to do. You have that creative urge, that calling from that age. It's just to be focused and channel. You need the right conditioning around you to get you there. And, and you moved to the United States fairly early in your Yeah, I got here, I think, you know, I remember the exact date. Uh, it's June 21st, 1980. 
Huh? Yeah. And how but, old were you then? You're oh, I must have, I'm, I must have been, um, <laughs> you know, I'm giving the age. I think I'm probably in my early 20s. Your early 20s, yeah. right, right. But the funny thing is, prior to coming to New York, I always went to Miami or California and never had the desire to move here permanently. And I tell folks, you know, that night when I got out Kennedy Airport and I walked around and took a ride from the airport into Manhattan, I knew. You know that this was New York was home. That this was it, and we've yeah. been showing pieces of yours. You're, yeah. you have a reputation for doing wonderful women. Yes. Uh, and and uh, what speaks? To, well, I'm saying what speaks to you <laughs> yeah. about her? How did you come to that to the to the female yeah. form as, as a major piece of your artwork? I'm 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 inspired, motivated by women. I grew up in a family with three sisters and my mother. Ah. And I, yeah. Grandmother and aunt. So woman has always been a major influence in my life. And I love women. I love everything about women. You know, as an artist, you appreciate the form, but also the personality, trying to understand the personality and the subtleties, you know. And I've spent 40 years painting and trying to understand women, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was to tell you I but do, keep, I'll be lying. Keep it up, you know. It's a, it, it has a productive a result. Con, yes, you know, it's a this, constant learning. This, and, yeah, this search for understanding yeah. is working out for you pretty well. I, I think so, too. <laughs> Dion, you've, uh, of the 60 to 80 artists who are going to be there, you there are several that you have uh, said you'd love to talk about today. One is freedom. The Lady Liberty, the... Uh, it's a special commemorative piece, but more than that, it's just a, a piece that really kind of impacts what the world is about or, or the Afrocentric world is about. It's, it's Lady Liberty when our arms, and you see that stretch out, you see the actual coalition of slave ships mm -hmm. in her arms. When you look at the bottom of her, of her feet, it's the chain that was there that's broken, and so it's the broken chain. And then from the artistic perspective, the artist actually put where the, the Apollo is behind the Apollo. It's the great artists, the Jacob Lawrence, the Elizabeth Catlett, the Charles yeah. Whites, yeah. all the Beardens, all of the greats are in those particular platforms and really in those apartments so it, it's a relationship right there and on the other side where you see the um, Lady Liberty that is in the harbor right now also right behind that is that's where the Harlem Fine Art Show was birthed and that's at the Riverside Church over these last 10 years and then right below it it's the um, picture of the individuals from the Harlem Renaissance on the, the brownstone steps that everybody kind of really has that captioned vision for all of these years. So that's there. So it's, it's wonderful, just wonderful, so wonderful appropriate. Piece. Who's the artist? Um, his name is Thomas Lockhart. Uh -huh. He's from uh, Denver, Colorado, and he just does some magnificent work that has such social implications and relevance that you can kind of go back and he has that Woodrow Nash type of face mm -hmm. in terms of that Afrocentric's face and the paintbrush, which is yeah. the liberation for people of color and all people in regards to being able to really have those strokes and sending out to the world. Incredible. So, we, have, we, have, we have another one as well, if we can put up the next one. Oh, that's... Um, um, well, my, this is a nice... Uh, this is Nina Simone. Yes, and um, it's just the positive words that just some of the imprints and, and, and verbiage that is gorgeous. So yeah. that so and what would the, do you uh, offhand know the price range for something like? Well, Lady this? Liberty is is a number of different prints. So it runs from seven hundred dollars on down. We have posters of Lady Liberty in a commemorative type of piece. That's fifteen dollars or twenty dollars. So everything is cost effective. What we try to do is bring works that are affordable, that are impactful, and then we have the fine fine artworks that really kind of. Yes. This is my favorite, one of my favorites here. Ah. This, this is, I love, I love this boy. Mm -hmm. He's just breaking through America, peak, um, peaking and seeing the impact on the world and how he can be a part of this world in just a very positive type of perspective. So talk to us, Ian, about how you, the influences in your life, uh, place yourself in black America and how you got to this point of making all of this wonderful art available. Jamaica Queens. St. Sure. Albans. Yeah. Um, a my great hometown. melting pot. Yes. 
<laughs> great melting pot. Right. Um, the opportunity to grow up in a multicultural community that was empowered, that really um, faced and, and really looked very positively on education and how to bring in, and, and not one person was raised by one person, you were raised by that community. That, that community. Mm -hmm. And that community was so great back in the days in regards to the 60s and the 70s and mm -hmm. during that time period. So very, very impactful and impactful in terms of making us aware of who we are and what we are and how we could be so much better. Right, right. Well said. And it's That's not very right. Well said. Your influences uh, in the art world, who who were the... Who um, there, there are so many influences. Yeah. Yeah, I, can, I, think, I can think of earlier on, we had some really great Jamaican artists growing up in Jamaica, like mm -hmm. Barton Watson, Capo, which is an intuitive artist. But on the larger scale, I admire some of Picasso's later work. And then we get into the Americans, you know, like people like Motherwell, Robert Motherwell, Jasper John. So as an artist, you take from everyone and you put together, you know, Picasso ever saying, you know, <laughs> good artists borrow, great artists steal. <laughs> so, you know, you take ideas from wherever you put, you put them together to come up with your own. But everything and everyone has been an influence for me throughout life. You draw inspiration from Everything. Sure, sure. And uh, we, we always ask the artists who come to the show uh -huh. their, their practice in terms of how much they paint every uh -huh. day or and all of that, what, where they paint. What well, I, I've always been an artist. I've never done anything other than being an artist. As I said, from age 10, I knew what I wanted to be. And uh, my practice is very disciplined because, you know, um, a lot of young artists, when I get an opportunity to speak to artists, I say to them, it's a passion, it's what we love, but it's also a business. So I'm very disciplined in the business aspect of it. I'm in the studio seven days a week, not necessarily painting, but I do, whether it's a business side, it's cataloging the work, photographing the work, writing essays about why you do what you do. And I put in, I get in the studio, I'm a late riser, you know, I get in the studio by 10 in the mornings, mm -hmm. and I'm there until maybe 12 at night. Sometimes I'm just sitting listening to music because everything brings something to you. So, okay. And that's every day I try to create or do something with, for my art. Every, 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 every single every day. Every single day. Wow, wow. And, you, and your creation, one of your many creations, is the, is the fine art show. Talk to us about the other things that are going there. It's not, as you mentioned earlier, not just art, but books and youth empowerment. Well, we have a, a four-day show that's getting ready to come up in New York City, and that's February 14th through the 17th. Um, it's an opportunity for us to really go into a market, and that's what we, a prototype of what we do in each city that we go into. We bring in cultural nutrition, and that cultural nutrition is so important for each and in every individual that comes through the show. Um, opening night, it's great because we've developed the empowerment type of opportunity. This year, it's a salute to African Americans in technology and how yeah, technology was, yeah. and art really right. kind of go together. Yeah, yeah. So, so talk to us a little bit about that because uh, uh, Scott yeah, was saying that, that artists have been using this it, technology for yeah, years. Yeah, they're, they're, they're greatly related. And as Dan you know, said, technology, it's all been creative. Um, there's this well-known story about Einstein back when the atomic bomb was developed and everything. And um, at that time, the American art, the modern American art movement had started. You had these guys who were doing abstract expressionism and things. And the reporter asked him, what do you think about modern art and what they're doing? And his response was, how can we expect the artists to be painting the day they were painting three, four hundred years ago when we have split the atom? Ah. So as technology moves forward, sure. creative folks, creative minds have always embraced it. Like when the camera came about, artists were one of the first of the people to use it in their work, whether to photograph the model or photograph a scene, and then take that back in the studio and work with Famous it. Famous Andy Warhol. Right? Exactly. So, so the creativity and science are, and the arts, they're all intertwined, no matter how you use it. Now artists, we're using the computer to generate mm -hmm. images and... It's all intertwined. And what we've done is we salute not only the technology and artists, but a little further in terms of saluting some of the African Americans that utilize technology in today's time mm -hmm. and really make them aware, like the hidden secret, the technology individuals in the African American market are some of the most um, 
individuals that are not seen on an ongoing basis. Yeah. So we bring the best to the best to the top and really kind of um, unveil it at the Harlem Fine Art Show. Yeah, one of the things I love that you were telling me about uh, in every city and you're going to where DC and wh where else are Chicago. you? Chicago. Chicago. Uh, so seven cities this year. Uh, but in every city that you go to, you have some relationship with the hospital or the doctors well, or the... Tell us about that. Along with that salute to African Americans in technology, two years ago, we started a salute to African Americans in medicine. We thought it was so important because medicine and the healing power of, of, of art, really they, they go together, that therape therapeutic perspective that we need on an ongoing basis and the light types of images that can just really satisfy mm -hmm. us, build our impressions, make us feel better, are so, so important. Mm -hmm. And also a milestone in regards to the key individuals in our community that help us when we are ill. And they're not being saluted. So, my colleagues and I got together and we formed something called a Salute to African Americans in Medicine. This year we have evolved so much that we've turned it into a dinner. So that dinner will take place mm. at the Harlem Fine Art Show and we've partnered with about 14 to 15 hospitals in the New York area, of course, Mount Sinai, um, sure. Harlem Hospital, Lincoln mm -hmm. Hospital, a number of hospitals throughout the tri-state area. And they select their highest ranking African-American doctor or administrator, and we bring the medical community together and we salute them. And you know, the doctors loved it because we're always sure. saluting the basketball players right. and the mm -hmm. celebrities and these type of individuals. All of a sudden, the doctors are really put on the stage and they're really able to express what this meant to them in terms of their journey in, in developing their expertise. And the key component we really liked is the next day we have Youth Empowerment Day. Yes. Mm, I want to talk about yeah. the kids, and right? Open right. up to the school. Art. So, so how, does, how does that work? What's the, because you don't really see that uh, relationship uh, uh, coming to the forefront as much, that art and empowerment. Mm -hmm. Well, we found that there's such a cutback in the school systems in regards to the arts. So okay. we opened up the program 10 years ago where we escalated this opportunity where we've gone to the public schools, the independent prep schools, the private schools, the charter schools, the Catholic schools, and we've invited them to come to the um, Harlem Fine Art Show for free no cost, mm -hmm. you bring in a class, like a class trip, and they get a chance to walk the floor. They meet the artists, they greet the artists. And the kids and, love it. Yes. And, and what, what, do they, what do they ask you? Well, they've got questions for you, a, a well-renowned artist. They, they, they want to be like him. They want to be like him. The first thing what? I tell them, don't. What? Uh, a lot of times I want to know, how do you do this? How do you get your inspiration? And uh, my easy answer on the inspiration is that inspiration is everywhere and you don't wait for inspiration to come to you, you make it happen. And you know, it, a lot of times it's technical questions too. How do you get this texture, how do you get that? But they're very interested and they're moved by it. And as you said, you know, and Dean said the cutback with the arts program, it's really wonderful to see them interact with so many artists. And they take so much from this in terms of some of the students that are coming year after year, like if you're starting in the fourth grade, um, four to five years yeah, later, and you're making the, the same, and you see right. the development, you see the teachers actually giving little assignments for them to talk to different artists and to um, um, become empowered, and they just spend that time, and it's a round robin because we also have an educational component. We do a STEAM initiative where we have the science, technology, engineering, and art in there, in mm -hmm. mathematics, and they get a chance to, um, again, get involved in that perspective, a little robotics that are there. Oh, they is, get, a, they yeah. get oh, yeah. understanding to be better. And, and as and an artist, too, I see the same kids a couple of years, you know, I, I, there's this one boy, I don't know what school he's from, but I've seen him like four years consistently, and he remembers me, mm -hmm. and I now remember him, so sometimes I look out for him, and then he comes by, and I, I watch a progression, and even the level of questions that he asks. Well, is, you know, that is t terrific that you've got that consistency yeah. going, that you, the, you see the kids from year to year yeah. in their development yeah. uh, in, in, in the, art. 
But but I, I and the doctors, you know what the doctors did? They developed something called mentoring in medicine, and they had the opportunity to talk to the kids from a medical perspective. Mm -hmm. And they don't, we don't in our communities, in terms right. of the multicultural community, most of the doctors are not um, living in these communities. They're living um, in expanded areas or or maybe a little more upscale types sure. of areas. Sure. And they get a chance to talk to the docs, and they get a chance to look them in the eye. I and, see possibilities. And yes, their yeah. eyes open up, and I can be like you. I can be like you, and, and that's the best thing in the world. Yeah, well, well Dion, you know? you've had such a varied career. Talk to us a little bit about the kinds of things. You're the TV personality. It's well, um, radio. Well, uh, I met you in a number of years. When I came out, <laughs> um, out of college, and I worked for WHN Radio right. as a reporter. Right. Um, through Joe Bragg and Ann Tripp and a few other great individuals just working the New York beat, going back to grad school after that and um, getting an MBA in marketing. And then from there, and then I went to a historically black college, Atlanta University. And uh, from there, um, went out to California and, and started working for Ford Motor Company in terms of setting up dealerships and marketing types of opportunities out in the West Coast. And then, lo and Quite behold, I met um, Earl Graves. Uh, and, uh, Earl, wonderful Earl. Earl right. got me right black, in the plane. Black Enterprise yes. magazine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. he said, come on back to New York and work with me in Black Enterprise. I spent a number of years in Black Enterprise and then had the fortune to be able to go over and work in Essence and help evolve in terms of the Essence Award award show and, of course, the music, music festival. Music festival in New Orleans, yes. right? And, um, right. a fantastic environment in, in meeting a Susan Taylor and a Clarence um, Smith and an Ed Lewis and really looking at them as role models on how you can evolve or become a black business owner with integrity and with pride. And then I opened up my own business with a number of partners and we developed magazines from city and suburban styles. Yeah, in and, fact, you and have the, these really classy magazines that, uh, yes. that, that accompany the show with Barack on one cover and Michelle on the other. We and found it so important to keep that um, verbal and that written communications to expound and, ex and, and really talk about the product and the things that we do. So yes, that's, that's a, a hand in glove perspective with the Harlem Fine Art Show. And, um, and now the Harlem Fine Art Show, yeah. it's been 10 years. Ten years. I know, so, yeah. so tell me, I have artist friends and they'd love to participate. You know, how does that happen? Our website, yeah. hfas.org hfas.org. Harlem Fine Arts. Sure. Yes, yeah. the acronyms for that. And you get right. the opportunity to um, actually have a, um, an application that they can fill out online and they send their works in with a couple of JPEGs and maybe a little note of what they would like to do. And we have a jury process that we jury everybody into the show. And Michael is a, pa a part of that process. You're, you're one of the jurors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sad yeah. to say. <laughs> <laughs> You don't accept artist. just everybody. Though. Yeah, you know, as an artist, you don't really like to judge other people. What we do, because we try to maintain a certain standard, you know, we right. a certain level of work inside there. So <laughs> some you got to say no to, but it's all good. And, and, yeah. and we and build a great community. We're sold out in terms of our show this year. We sold out for the last three or four years. Um, but more than anything else, the community of artists at the Harlem Fine Art Show embrace each other. It's a, it's a rite yeah, of passage. It's, yeah. It's fantastic. You got, you got me, you know? I mean, you had me at hello. I mean, <laughs> and all of these 80 artists and whatever. But we always close our show, and you guys will mm -hmm. have to come back, you know? Um, by asking you to finish the statement, the power of the strength of black America lies in, what would that be for you, Tia? Of being positive, of having a foresight in regards to what's coming down the road and to, um, instead of being nasty and instead of um, bullying, embrace and become successful upon your embracement. Well, to add to what Dean just said, history, I have a sense of where we have been and then where we are now, and the vision of our future. And don't forget who we are, what brought us here. It's exact, June this year marks 400 years since we came here as a people, under very adverse conditions. And we need to remember that and keep a vision of where we can be as a people for the future. Well, I wanna thank you both so much for being with us today. Uh, the, again, the Harlem Fine Art Show starts February 14th, yes. runs for the 17th. You're sold out, so what happens to the people 
who are banging on the door, will you make room for them? No, the sold boots. out for the artists. For the ah, for the artists. We are open. We're Art always open, open for the everyone. public. All right, we're so you can for still, the, we're, you know, yeah. we're looking for that 10,000, 15,000 <laughs> people to come. You'll even take 20,000, yes. right? Yes. So be Support one of the 20,000. Support our artists, it's so important. Your presence, your interaction, and your embracement of these individuals that are very unique the only pure um, and it's, way to send that passage. And it's good nourishment for the soul. Cultural Feed, nutrition. Yes. Very good. Well, with those final statements, I think we'll close up. Thank you both so much Thank for being here. Much. We'll it's see so you fun. at Riverside Church. Yes. yes. This year and next year and the, the year after. after. Right. Hopefully okay. for the next you. 10 years <laughs> after this. Okay, another 20. Thanks so much to Dion Clark and Escoffrey for being with us today. Both of you are terrific. The Harlem Fine Art Show will be at the Riverside Church from February 14th through the 17th. Be sure to check it out. And thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Carol Jenkins. The show is Black America. We'll see you the next time. Thank you.